Yes, sir. I'd like you to answer that question uh, about what do you think, knowing them, working with the globalists, the New World Order, in the past when it was still America, before we were totally dominated, what do you think their next moves are probably uh, most probable, A, and then finally, uh, the attacks against the government in Pakistan uh, using uh, Muslim fronts, does that appear to be the West trying to, to destabilize your government? They keep trying to kill the government. They killed Budo. They keep bombing government buildings. They keep bombing hotels. It appears the West is using false mujahideen to try to overthrow Pakistan. No, Benazir was not killed by any of the terrorists. She was removed by Americans because she had violated her agreement because they wanted to keep Pervez Musharraf there and he slapped another martial law on Pakistan. So she had become rebellious. And such a person who is a popular leader of a third world country, head of the largest political party, a woman who they could not attack as fundamentalist because she was so westernized, Therefore, it was very important for them to remove her because they have a mischievous plan which they want to put through. So they have installed instead Mr. Zardari, whom they can blackmail very easily, but have allowed him to keep the powers that of a dictator. And in fact, he is the one who is calling all the shots in Pakistan. So if at all, Pakistan is already destabilized politically. Our uh, the uh, judicial institution simply does not exist because there is a judicial crisis. Recently, the dethroned uh, chief justice of Pakistan. Yes, who is Pakistan staging? Is who is staging the terror attacks? Because they're clearly aimed at the government, or is that the government staging them as a pretext to crack down? No, no, no. This is because Lal Masjid was attacked, and I think George Bush addressed. Uh, his nation on radio immediately after that said this was part of our plan in war against terrorism because they were suspecting that Pakistan Army and the Inter-Services Intelligence were not fully cooperating and they, because they did not consider it was their war. Therefore, they created this situation where the terrorists, out of sheer revenge, this is, this is called Pakhtun Wali. This is a tradition. It has nothing to do with uh, Islam. It is the Afans were uh, beholden to this tradition long before they became Muslim, and they are still carrying it out. When you uh, take action against an Afghan, kill his daughter or his wife or his sister, he will take revenge, no doubt what happens. Then he does not uh, behave like uh, a Muslim or any other uh, entity. So this, is, uh, this was a, a thing which was created. And, uh, of course, Pakistan is now in a very difficult position. We only have a stable military institution which can control the condition. And we have an ISI. And, but the Americans are almost every day attacking the ISI and attacking the military, saying that this is not under control of the political party, Sir? The political power. Sir, General. But what is political power when parliament is sinecure? It does not work. It has no authority at all. General, uh, going back to 9-11, uh, Pakistani papers, BBC reported, New York Times reported, $100,000 was reportedly wired by General Mahmoud Ahmed, the head of Pakistani intelligence, to the lead hijacker, who we know is a U.S. government decoy, trained at U.S. bases. That's Newsweek, AP Reuters. General Mahmoud Ahmed, do you believe he really was being controlled by the CIA? Did he really wire $100,000 to Mohammed Atta? Not at all. Mahmoud is a friend of mine. I met him uh, very recently in Lahore, and he categorically denies this. I think this is all disinformation which uh, have been adopted as a very sophisticated intelligence art. So just to be clear, we're going to let you go, and we're very thankful and respectful of your time. Um, you believe that the bombings and terror attacks and shootings that we've seen the last few months uh, in Pakistan are because the Predator drones and helicopters are killing weddings, which you always notice it's a wedding that's meant to stir up the people there because it kills whole families. It's a huge insult. And then, of course, they blow up NATO cars. Of course, they then attack the government. Is that what you're saying? This is retaliatory, and they will retaliate. I can tell you that Afghanistan nation is such that over 5,000 years, nobody has won against them, and I think the Americans cannot win unless American intention is to, to stir up a, a third world war from this point. I think there is no point in staying in, in Afghanistan. 
you should negotiate with the opposition which is a national resistance law it is no longer taliban specific it is the afghan nation a uh, true to their tradition they are resisting uh, ferociously the opposition. general how long can the mayor of kabul stay in power and and isn't this really just about the west controlling the opium well he is a puppet of kabul and he will not stay very long i can assure you that uh, he's already started uh, showing signs of nervousness he wants to reach out to the taliban but taliban would not uh, uh, even throw a crumb at him i can assure you the taliban or any other resistance fighters they don't will have nothing to do with well, reuters is reporting Reuters is reporting, as you know, every major city is now encircled, and only a few cities are controlled by uh, the U.S. force. I, I have no idea, but I think uh, the, the vibes have started coming out, like uh, uh, Robert Kagan's uh, article in uh, Washington Post on December 2nd. Uh, it um, uh, echoes what is uh, the World at Risk report. Uh, it is similar. They are focusing on Pakistan. because pakistan's nuclear capability is undigestible by state of israel and by india and uh, therefore uh, there there is uh, every right. possibility that pakistan becomes a target in and closing in closing and this is it we appreciate all your time is worth this hour is over in 2 minutes sir what do you see happening i know you can't predict the future but do you see them staging a nuke attack do you see them staging more terror attacks do you see india sneak attacking uh, do you see a more radical government coming in after the staged events what do you see happening bad case scenario no indians are not uh, so stupid i i think they have seen through the game and uh, the uh, leftist parties that is the left front they are called the communist parties in india are very strong india uh, is uh, slowly turning towards uh, its own uh, problem uh, they they uh, the shine india shining india feel good india this is all make believe i uh, can tell you that uh, this is a propaganda hype about india india is in a miserable state uh their economy is also dwindling and uh, 400 millions are living on less than 1 dollar a day and this is beginning to have effect because last year alone 108000 farmers of india committed suicide and this will not go on out of 608 districts of india 231 are already in turmoil and mostly under the control of moist and the naxalite so they are collapsing yes so india itself has lots of problem of their own you're right the gmo cotton made them commit suicide because it destroyed their lives well general uh, general hamid uh, gul thank you so much for joining us any websites any books any materials you think people should read to learn more thank you sir Uh, any books or websites uh, that 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 you think people should read to learn more? Oh, I uh, don't have a website, uh, unfortunately. But I think you have a website. They can read all my talks. Absolutely, we'll post the audio and a transcript at infowars.com. Okay. Let me say bye to you as this hour ends. As we go to break, sir, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with the second hour. Again, I want to thank General Hamid Gul, an amazing exclusive, folks, unedited live.